Hey there, Patriots. Let's go ahead and get started on our second lesson of Unit 2. Um, we're going to need to review, first off, what this perfect square trinomial is. So let's jump over here on the side, and we'll come back to the main note section in a second. Let's take this, x plus 7 squared. Now, this is called a perfect square because we're taking something or multiplying it by itself to get something that is squared. So x plus 7, or this could be re rewritten as x plus 7 times x plus 7. Now, when I go to multiply that out, I'm going to have to either FOIL or BOX or whatever method your Algebra 1 teacher taught you. Um, we're going to multiply the x times both the x and the 7, and the 7 times both the x and the 7. So, x times x is x squared, x times 7 is plus 7x. Then we jump to the ones on bottom, 7 times x is 7x, 7 times 7 is 49. Now, this happens every single time that I do one of these perfect squares. This middle term ends up being doubled, and it's the exact same term. So, whenever I simplify this down, I get x squared plus 14x plus 49. Now, when you think about where that came from, this particular term right here, the 14x, came from the 7x plus the 7x, which in turn came from the 7 times the x and the x times the 7. So this number will always be exactly two times that number. Also, when you think about where this 49 came from, this 49 came from the 7 times the 7, which is always going to be that number squared. So I can take the shortcut here, and let's just do one, x plus 9 squared. I can take the shortcut and just go ahead and write in my x's. And then if I take the 9 and double that, I'm going to get 18. If I take the 9 and square that, I'm going to get 81. It works the same way with negative numbers. x minus 3 squared. Take that number and double it, and I get negative 6x. Take that number and square it. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Now, I could also go the opposite direction with factoring. Let's say that I was given x squared plus 14x plus 49, and I was asked to factor that. Well, I know that that thing could be rewritten as x plus 7 times x plus 7. I know that because I'm working my way back up this, this chart. And then that would in turn be x plus 7 squared. So if I notice this pattern that this number cut in half, is the exact same as the square root of that number, then it is a perfect square trinomial, and I could factor it down to this. So again, if I had something like x squared plus 36, nope, plus 12x plus 36, well, half of 12 is 6. The square root of 36 is 6. That means it fits my perfect square trinomial pattern, so this is x plus 6 squared. Yeah, we covered that in Algebra 1. We covered that a little bit earlier this year, but now we're actually going to really start using that quite a bit. Okay, so you can see here's my, here's my um, example here. Half of 8 is 4, square root of 16 is 4, so it ends up being x plus 4 squared. Now, these perfect squares are really important when we start trying to graph parabolas and to graph quadratics, so much so that we're going to do a process called completing the square. Now, whenever I complete the square, I'm going to take a part of this. Like, say, for example, I had just this written down, x squared plus 12x. And I'm going to need to figure out what number goes here in order to complete it to make the full perfect square trinomial. So, let's go ahead and see what I need to add for this c value. <coughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to take this number, the b value, and divide it by 2. Actually, I want to do this in red because it makes it easier to see. b divided by 2 equals 5. So that's 10 divided by 2 is 5. Then I want to take 5 and square it, and that gives me 25. So what we're going to do is we're going to complete the square by adding in a 25. But by doing that, I've changed the value of this expression because I've added 25 to it. 
Now, if I want to maintain the value, I need to also subtract off the 25 because these two together equal zero, which means I have not changed anything. However, what this allows me to do is now take this piece and factor it down. That gives me x plus 5 squared minus 25. And it will always be the case that this number exactly matches that number. It will also always be the case that this number exactly matches that number. Okay, so let's practice that. Let's go down here with x squared plus 14x plus c. Here I'm going to do my b divided by 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. Then I'm going to do 7 squared is 49. Let's rewrite that now as x squared plus 14x plus 49, actually, let me do that in blue, plus 49 minus 49. Now, whenever I factor that, that's going to give me x plus 7 squared minus 49. Okay, do the exact same process with negative numbers. Again, b divided by 2. Now we've got a negative 8, which is negative 4. Now we're going to square that. Now negative 4 times negative 4 becomes positive 16. So let's add that in now to complete my square. x squared minus 8x plus 16 and minus 16. Now we're going to factor that down. When this time we get x minus 4 because that was a negative squared and then minus 16 on the end. So I'm going to go ahead and skip number 4 for the sake of time here because I don't want you guys to have a 45 minute long video. Um, we're going to get more practice on that in the following problems anyway. So <clears throat> Whenever it says write each quadratic into vertex form. Now, our next lesson that you're going to get tomorrow is going to be quite a bit over vertex form. For now, what you need to know, oh, there was also, I believe, on y'all's some more directions right here. Go ahead and just erase those. Um, we're not going to use that, so just scribble it out if it's there. Um, vertex form is honestly just this. The, the actual format of it is y equals a times x minus h plus k. And we'll talk a lot next time about what A, H, and K actually mean. But for now, we just need to worry about how to set it up. We're going to do that by completing the square. So we're going to take our B value, B divided by 2, which is 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. Then we're going to take 3 squared and have 9. Let's go ahead and add that in. Y equals X plus 3. Now, this minus, this minus 5 here has to be rewritten down again. And, oh, what am I doing? Doo, 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 doo. Let me back up a second. Sorry, I forgot to do something. <laughs> I've got to add, I've got to add the 9 and subtract the 9. Now, what ends up happening whenever I rewrite this is I get y equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then this minus 5 and minus 9 together combine to be a minus 14. Now, the reason that I combine those two together and not the 9 is that I need that 9 in order to make this a perfect square trinomial. So that is x plus 3 squared minus 14, which is now in vertex form. And we can move on. Next time, we'll learn what to do with that. OK. Now, let's do again our b over 2. 4 over 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. Now, let's go ahead and add in our plus 4 and minus 4. Now remember, this 6 and this negative 4 are going to get combined together. When we rewrite it, y equals 
x squared plus 4x plus 4, and again, that plus 4 came from there, Negative, or positive 6 minus 4 is plus 2. I guess I was doing that in purple for consistency's sake. So now I've got this perfect square trinomial right here. Y equals, let's factor this down. And again, the B over 2 value just goes here. X plus 2 squared, and then plus 2. Now I'm written in vertex form. Again, next time we'll learn what to do with that. For now, we're just writing it. Okay, now what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start skipping this step and just working straight into this one. Now remember that this 2 came from adding this one to that one, which is just the original constant value plus this, or minus that term. Go ahead and do our b over 2. So that gives me negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. Now we're going to do negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. Now, like I said, we're going to skip straight into this final form here. Again, the b value, the negative 1, goes right here. And then this term is going to be the 4, and then I need to have the minus 1 from the one that I added on here. So minus, well, 4 minus 1 is plus 3. Now, let's do our b over 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. So this ends up becoming y equals x plus 5. And then again, we have the 20 minus 25 over here. And so that becomes 20 minus 25 is minus 5. And again, if you don't like going straight to that form, you can always write it out like we did on the first two. Okay, so that's all of the converting to vertex form. Now we need to practice going from vertex form to quadratic, or turn to standard form, which remember standard form is just y equals a x squared plus b x plus c. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply this out, which we practiced earlier. y equals negative 2. Now, I'm going to put the parentheses for this, and then my plus 3 here on the end. Um, we're going to go ahead and multiply out x plus 1 squared, which if you remember what we did up here at the beginning, we always said that it was double the 7 got 14, square the 7 got 49. So we're going to double and then square. So x squared, double the 1, and you get 2. Square the 1, and you get 1. Now our second piece here is we've got to distribute the negative 2 across the parentheses. So we've got y equals negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times 2x is minus 4x. And negative 2 times 1 is minus 2. And then our plus 3 drops. Now we're just going to combine our like terms on the end. y equals negative 2x squared minus 4x. Negative 2 plus 3 is plus 1. Sorry about that. We had to pause while they did the Pledge of Allegiance over the loudspeaker because I really didn't think I wanted to stand up and do the pledge at home. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply this one out. Same steps as before. I'm going to do it again. And we're back again. Okay, so we've got g of x. We're going to start off by expanding out this one. I'm going to write it here and then go ahead and put my plus 4 on the end. Now we're going to get x squared, double the negative 1, and you get negative 2x. Square the negative 1, and you get positive 1. Now, let's go through and distribute the 12 across the parentheses. So g of x equals 12x squared. 12 times negative 2x is negative 24x. 12 times 1 is plus 12, plus 4. And now, 
combine our like terms. G of x is equal to 12x squared minus 24x, 14, I'm sorry, 12 and 4 make 16. Okay, that's all of our new material. We're going to go through and practice doing um, some of the stuff from last time. And I'm not going to do number two here because you can always go back through and watch some more of those videos um, or that video from yesterday. But let's go ahead and practice this again. So we've got our, for number one, we want to find our vertex. We have to do that first by finding the axis of symmetry, which happens at x equals negative b over 2a. So b is 8, so negative 8 divided by 2. a is negative 2 which is negative eight divided by negative four and simplifies to two. So my axis of symmetry is at x equals two. I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in. Now to find the vertex, we're going to substitute two into the original equation. y equals negative two x squared plus eight x minus three. Plugging in our two for both of those. Now, 2 squared is 4, times negative 2 is negative 8. 8 times 2 is 16, minus 3. Negative 8 plus 16 is positive 8, minus 3 is 5. So our vertex is going to happen at 2, 5. So let's go up here to 2, 5. Now, is it a maximum or a minimum? So since we have a negative two, my general shape is going to be an upside down parabola, making this a maximum. The y-intercept is going to be at the c value of zero, negative three. So here we got negative three. And that's going to reflect this over, so that's two away from the axis. So we're gonna go two away again. And then I can go through and graph my rough sketch of my parabola. Now domain is negative infinity to infinity all the time. And I forgot to add it on here, but the range looks like my top value is five and negative infinity is the bottom value. So there we go. Um, good luck on your assignment.